Hi, I'm Trasica Kirchhoff, Assistant Curator of European Sculpture and Decorative Arts at the DIA. As a newly appointed curator, I arrived in Detroit very recently, only about a month before the DIA transitioned to working from home in response to COVID-19. And I still have so much to learn about our community. I was recently walking on Belle Isle and I was delighted to come upon the Belle Isle Conservatory with its beautiful greenhouse and koi pond. And it reminded me how many of us are missing familiar public places that offer beauty, discovery, and meditation. I can't wait to be surrounded by artworks at the DIA once again, but until then, I'd like to share one of the museum's often overlooked treasures that I've loved since I first visited Detroit long before I joined the staff. A small painting by the North Italian artist Andrea Solario hangs in the DIA's Galleries of European Renaissance Art. The panel measures just over 14 by 10 inches and it's located just to the left of where we would be standing if this were our view. It's much smaller than many of the large artworks installed nearby, or Jacopo Tintoretto's famous The Dreams of Men, which dominates the gallery's ceiling. However, this artist's evocation of the materialities of metal and skin lend this composition monumentality far beyond its intimate scale. The image represents two figures in oil paint on wood, both are identified as saints, not by halos, but by the crowns held above their heads by pairs of cherubs or puti, who flutter above the vaulted architectural spaces in which the men stand, enframed by ruddy stone arches. On the left is St. George, who was popular throughout the medieval and Renaissance periods and far beyond as a paradigm of knighthood and heroism. According to legends dating to the 11th and 12th centuries, George was a Roman cavalryman who had converted to Christianity. When he heard of a town that was menaced by a wicked dragon who demanded sacrifices of young maidens, he set out to slay the beast and in so doing, save the town and its daughters. Artistic representations of St. George, including many in the DIA, typically represent him as a knight armored in the equipment fashionable when the image was made. He wields a lance and sword and is often shown vanquishing a dragon, which stands in as a symbol of evil, presenting George as an archetype of good. In Solario's painting, the knight's armor, the dragon that lies at his feet, and the broken lance that he holds allude to this dramatic story though the figure himself is still and calm. Although St. George was said to have been later martyred for his Christian faith, he is generally cast as a victorious hero in works of art, where he embodies the ideal of the virtuous knight. Across from George, on our right, stands St. Sebastian, another Roman soldier saint, who, according to tradition, was martyred by being shot with arrows during the Roman emperor Diocletian's reign. Two slender arrows that Sebastian holds and his state of undress, as if ready for execution, subtly allude to his martyrdom. While the fine Renaissance style sword he holds signals his military identity. However, like the other saint with whom he shares the panel, he is calm. His idealized form and slight contrapposto pose, resting his weight on one leg while counterbalancing the movement with his torso, make him seem statuesque, a timeless figure that is at once classical and contemporary. The artist, Andrea Solario, sometimes called Solari, was born in Milan around 1465. Though he traveled throughout Northern Italy and was especially influenced by Venetian painters, it was in France that he reached the apex of his artistic achievement. In 1507, Solario left Milan to enter the service of Cardinal Georges d'Amboise, who was chief minister to King Louis XII of France and who had traveled frequently to Italy as an ambassador and military leader. While working at the Cardinal's castle, the Chateau de Gaillon in Normandy, seen here, Solario may have been exposed to the distinctive style of naturalistic oil painting popular in Flanders and the Netherlands. 
as well as the works of renowned French artists like Jean Clouet, whose portrait of the Cardinal is seen here. Indeed, Cardinal d'Amboise may have been the patron of the DIA painting. As the Cardinal's namesake, George was one of his patron saints. Further, scholars have suggested that the armored saint's face is modeled after the Cardinal. Comparison of the visage in the painting with, with the portrait by Clouet supports this possible connection between Solario's patron and the Detroit panel. Both images depict a face defined by a prominent brow, slightly aquiline nose, fleshy cheeks, and an inquisitive expression with alert eyes and lips slightly upturned as if about to smile. Cardinal d'Amboise's involvement in French military campaigns in Northern Italy, as well as negotiating important peace treaties on behalf of King Louis, would make two soldier saints natural choices for an intimate painting commissioned for personal devotion. Some scholars have suggested that this panel may have been part of a small triptych or three panel altarpiece with an image of the Madonna and child at its center. However, firm identification of other paintings with which it was associated remains elusive. Though painted when Solario was working in France, the armor that encases the figure of St. George perfectly recalls the quintessential style produced in the artist's native Milan during the 15th century. Milan was famous for its technologically innovative and fashionable armors throughout the 15th and 16th centuries and workshops like that of the brothers Tommaso, Antonio, and Damiano, Damiano Massalia supplied luxury armors to the princes of Europe. Indeed, the Massalia who signed their works with an MY beneath a crown and an M beneath a split cross were favored not only by the Dukes of their native Milan, but by the Dukes of Burgundy and members of the French court. A surviving armor seen here crafted by the Massalia for Friedrich van der Falls, a German prince of the Holy Roman Empire, closely echoes the forms of the armor that Solario painted. The sleek, gently rounded forms of the breastplate, arm, and leg defenses, the leather strap connecting the abdominal defense or placard to the upper part of the breastplate, which allows the torso to bend and move more freely, even the flexible interlocking rings of mail that protect the feet. Each of these details ties Solario's image of the knightly saint to the armor for which the artist's home city was famous. By the time of the painting's creation during the first decade of the 16th century, the mid 15th century style of Milanese armor worn by St. George would have been considered quite outdated especially by an erudite and fashionable patron like George d'Amboise. Perhaps Solario deliberately clad the saint in old fashioned armor to suggest his existence within a historical time period, removed from the present that the artist and his viewers inhabited. For me, one of the most striking aspects of Solario's little painting is its juxtaposition of two martial saints bodies one clad in steel, the other wearing only a cloth to protect his modesty. The artist sensitively rendered the materialities of polished metal and soft skin. And St. Sebastian's naked torso is subtly mirrored in St. George's reflective breastplate. This quiet dialogue between flesh and steel seems to allude to the ultimate vulnerability of the human bodies that armor was designed to defend. Consideration of this physical fragility and the innovations we develop to protect ourselves lends the painting a poignancy and connects this small devotional artwork crafted over 500 years ago by an Italian artist working for a prominent French patron to universal human experiences that transcend time and place. I look forward to the time when we can all gather in museum spaces once again. And I hope that on your next visit to the DIA, you'll pay special attention to the small yet monumental work and the wonderful objects that surround it as you explore the galleries or the online collection. Thank you.